Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it spring break question mark because there's a couple things going on here in the financials that uh, I want to bring your attention to and uh, could be interesting. A little bit of, uh, you know, a couple of these things, a couple of these major ETFs are out of sync and we're going to talk about that. We're going to focus about XLF, KBE, which is the S&P Bank uh, ETF. We're going to look at KRE, which is the uh, S&P Regional Bank ETF. And then we're going to look at the three biggest components of XLF, which is Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, and Visa. Okay, so XLF is on the screen. And you can see with this last week's move, it was up 63 cents. The intra-week high poked above that all-time high that occurred back in January of 22. So a little over two years ago, we just went to a new all-time high on an intra-week basis. And actually, I think the closing on a closing basis too. You could see we closed above the prior closing week, which is the week of January 2nd, closed 41.17. This week we closed 41.42. So we've had a big, strong move since October of last year, so last five months. Huge move to the upside. Now, here's one thing I want to point out. Look how overbought we are. The RSI, and I use a 10-bar RSI on all my charts. The RSI is sitting at 88.2. That is the most overbought reading of the RSI of the last 25 years on a weekly basis the most overbought on XLF. So this could get really, really interesting. Now it hasn't started to break down just yet. Right now it's trending very, very strongly. So we'll see what happens. Okay, let's take a look at KBE. Now, the interesting thing with KBE, the bank ETF, we've had this big downtrend that it broke out of, it broke out, out from, I guess is the best way to say it, in mid-December of last year. But then since that big break, it's just chopped sideways. Sideways to slightly down, I would say, okay? Now, it looks like it's trying to turn to the upside in here. The 55 week I've got in here is still trending down, okay? And then the, the other major thing that jumps out at you is the resistance that was occurring in all of this choppiness back in 2022 into early 2023 has created major uh, resistance that that's what it ran into in December. And it hasn't been able to get above that level. OK, so this is when we had the major bank breakdown in March of last year. OK, and so. It hasn't really recovered very well uh, since then. It's been trying since October, but it hasn't gotten through that. It's gotten back, basically barely got back to the level where the breakdown occurred. Okay, so that's what's going on with KBE trying to put a turn in. Let's take a look at the regional banks, KRE. So they haven't broken the long downtrend. And I'm talking about a downtrend that has occurred since January of 22. So no breakout at this point on the regionals. And if you do the same thing, let me just use my marker. You talk about right in through here was where resist, major resistance occurred. We haven't even come close to getting back up into that level yet. Okay, so number one, it's going to need to break a trend line if it's going to do it. And it's going to need to pull back up into this area right in here where it broke down from in March of last year, basically a year ago. So that is the picture in terms of weakness that I'm seeing here uh, on KRE. Now, let's take a look. I'm going to pull up and look at XLF with these two overlaid on top. All right, so let me go back to XLF and let me pull up this chart right here. So here's what I've got. The um, the uh, the price action, the price uh, axis for XLF is right here on the right. Then the far left is for KBE. And then the second one from the left is up for KRE. OK, this 48.47, which is where it closed. So here's what I've noticed. So here's where that breakdown occurred from, right? So these two 
down here haven't recovered very well. And I just talked about how KBE tried to get back up and hit the major resistance in here. Look at what's happened since the, the peak here in December, mid-December. Big strong trend up on XLF. But these have not confirmed that and even more weakness in the regional banks. So either these are going to play catch up and get back in sync with XLF or these are signaling that there's major weakness and we're going to get a breakdown in XLF. Now, most of the time, here's why I'm thinking this could be the case, that this may be signaling some kind of corrective move about ready to happen in XLF, is because most of the time these are in sync. Okay, if you scroll back down in here, you say, except I'm going to show you the one that jumped out at me. And it, it, here's where it, all of a sudden it comes obvious when you, when you start looking at it. See how they stay in sync right here? Then look right here. This is right before the 2020 crash. Okay, so I'm not saying there's a crash coming. I'm just telling you this is the last time we got out of sync between the three. Okay, that I could tell just by, you know, just a quick and dirty glance back through everything. So here's the peak. Here's the week right here in mid-December of 2019. And it kind of chopped sideways to higher in here into February, the week of February 9th. All right. But that wasn't confirmed by uh, KBE or KRE. So the banks and the regionals did not confirm that move. They declined and then we got the collapse. So this wasn't very much. I mean, we're only talking about what, two, four, six, eight, nine weeks of, of uh, divergence versus two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 weeks of divergence. So a little bit greater. So 14 weeks versus nine weeks back in March of uh, February. Uh, or let's just say January, February into March of 2020. But we're getting that divergence showing up. So it's kind of interesting. To me, it raises a flag. We need to keep an eye on this. So when we look at XLF, what are the three big components of XLF? Let me go back and I'm going to switch and pull up uh, Berkshire Hathaway. OK, so here's Berkshire Hathaway. So it's had a 30% gain since October, last five months, 30% gain. And I'm going from intra-week low to intra-week high. But here's the interesting thing right here. Look at this RSI peak right here. It, this is an RSI of 85.7%. This is the most overbought since the week of January 21st of 2018, okay? And look how we've been, it was followed by a very bearish engulfing candle. And yeah, we've bounced back a little bit since then. But when you go back and take a look at uh, January 2018, let's just go back over here. We're talking about right here. Okay, let me move it over for you. See that RSI peak right there? Right here. Followed by a bearish engulfing candle that then dropped this from close to close 14% over the next four, four uh, months on Berkshire Hathaway. Now, it was just a corrective activity, but it was 14% over four months, so kind of interesting. All right, let's take a look at JP Morgan. So I'm going to go back over here. So, you know, again, with what's going on with the divergence, and then we start to see some of this, and again, this is the biggest holding of 13.4% uh, in XLF. JP Morgan is 9.7% when you round it. Let's just pull that up right here. And here's what JP Morgan, let me get rid of that. 48.3% since October of 23, last five months. And then the last 17 months, 90, almost 98% going from intraweek low to intraweek high. Okay, huge moves on JP Morgan. And you can see where the all-time high was back over here in uh, January of 22. 
actually that was October of 21 at 172.96 and we closed at 196.62 here this last week uh, with a high of 200.48 okay um, and here's the interesting thing about JP Morgan the most overbought reading of the last 25 years Now, that doesn't automatically guarantee that this is going to correct or it's just going to go sideways or pull back or whatever, but it does tell you that it is extremely overbought. And so to be on alert for some kind of breakdown in this, you know, we're getting close on a couple of things that I'm watching in here. It hasn't done it yet, but again, you know, this is kind of an alert type of thing. All right, let's take a look at Visa. That was the one that's the uh, the third biggest holding in here. And Visa is at, uh, looks like 8.1%, I think it is, if I'm reading that right, of uh, XLF, the strongest holding holdings. Okay, so up 27.6% since over the last five months and up 66.6% .6 over the last 17 months from intra-week low to intra-week high. Again, here's the all-time high that occurred in uh, July of 21. Prior to breaking above that here la in the fall of last year as it continued to move to the upside. Now, as opposed to the other two, we are getting a little bit of divergence that's showing up. Not huge just yet. Kind of signaling a little bit of a possible uh, you know, breakdown that's getting ready to, to get going. Uh, so this is going to be interesting to see. Do we start to close below the 10-week uh, moving average? Do we start to roll over and break down in here? Okay, so that's Visa. I'm also looking to see do we have anything else. Um, something. I've got something in my notes here. No, I thought I had something else I wanted to say about Visa, but I think I've said all that I intend to say at this point. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Going to be an interesting uh, few weeks. Could be an interesting rest of the spring. Everyone, uh, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.